सो गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन आर बी स्पीकिंग ऑन दिस टॉपिक ऑफ लेवरेजिंग डी सेंट्रलाइज स्टोरेज फॉर एविडेंस मैनेजमेंट एंड द टॉक इज डिवाइडेड इन टू टू पार्ट्स फर्स्ट आई लाइक एक्सप्लेन वट वी डू एट लाइट हाउस एंड वट आर प्रोडक्ट्स आर अबाउट एंड हाउ इट्स बींग यूज आउट देयर एंड सेकेंड इज मोर ऑन वट आर द रियल एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ एविडेंस मैनेजमेंट एंड डेटा इंटीग्रेटिव एप्लीकेशन दैट वी आर सींग अराउंड बट आप फील फ्री टू आस्क एनी क्वेश्चन इफ एनी वन हैज or during the talk itself um but yeah as a brief intro uh, what we are building at lighthouse is a data layer which is powering ai deep in and nfts application we started two years back as a filecoin ecosystem team and then since then uh, we got our product out and now focusing on growing as well and the problem that we started off with that lighthouse at start was um first of all there's a risk of losing data in web3 um one of the biggest examples is nfts that requires a persistent long term storage solution um because nfts can be minted on any l1 or l2 blockchain but they have to be stored somewhere so and that place has to be a persistent storage and with the chain states also growing a lot like solana right now is at 450 petabyte of terabytes of storage so these chains also require like a persistent low cost um way to store all the archive of the chains uh, second thing is lack of security we saw that the current systems out there didn't provide any encryption and privacy so this is another thing that uh, we solve at lighthouse third thing is poor usability that for newcomers like be it developers or individual users um they weren't like very easy to use dashboards and sdks so these are the problem statements that we started off with at lighthouse and the solution that we came up with uh, was first providing permanent storage that you can store light, your data on lighthouse and with just one time payment you can pay once store files forever and you need not pay again and again on a monthly basis imagine something like icloud uh, which is asking on everyone's phone that upgrade and pay me every month but then um lighthouse offers you like this long term storage option and i'll also explain in next slide on how does that work but then the second thing is access control that you can store encrypted data on us you can build token gated applications what does the token gating part means is that let's say if you own certain tokens in your wallet that could be um some crypto tokens nfts etc then only you can access a file so that kind of on chain uh, logic and conditions can be built and then we provide very easy to use dashboards that you can log in with your crypto wallets you can log in with your google github you can pay us even in stable coins or even uh, using credit card and um whatever popular payment mechanisms are present in the market so for a permanent storage at a core we have this model that we call as data endowments and what it essentially means is as any real world endowment works um when you pay for your data at lighthouse your payment goes to this on chain smart contract pool of funds we call it endowment pool like universities have an endowment pool like museums have an endowment pool um and then collectively uh, from next week onwards as we are getting these data endowments live there will be a lighthouse endowment pool which will be storing all the nfts data all the ai data that we are working with and all the deep in data etc but then very soon we can see a uh, very domain specific um data sets and data endowments also pop up like right now we are working with the team nft storage which has around like 450 terabytes of nft data and then they will be spinning up a nft specific data endowment uh using lighthouse and how we we envision these data endowments to work is um like it's essentially if you see like a smart contract pool of funds uh that is managing long term storage and underlying all the data that's being stored but then long term um there will be a mechanism for revenue generation here where the pool funds itself can generate yield through various uh, defi mechanisms like it can earn through uh like filecoin lending it can earn through stable coins lending but then parallelly um as people want to do access control and retrieve this data or in future compute over this data as well they can pay to these data endowments and then all the dao holders will be able to let's say earn for providing these services and then um these data endowments are meant to be uh, very configurable that you can configure that okay how long you want your data to be stored what kind of 
uh, replication factors you want, all of that can be configured. And uh, we already have a very robust ecosystem of um, users that we are working with right now, and most of these are paying customers as well. Uh, for example, the first use case that we saw a lot of traction was NFTs. Uh, with NFTs, we saw various individual developers, platforms who integrated Lighthouse and storing their entire NFT collections on us. And uh, recently, we got NFT storage, which has most of the bigger marketplaces like OpenSea, Magic, Eden using uh, NFT storage. And now, uh, for the new product, they are using Lighthouse underneath. And then from last six months, we are seeing a lot of products um, in terms of data availability. For example, DA is one of those domains where entire blockchain uh, state data is being stored on Lighthouse, which is quite interesting. And then in terms of AI, we have worked with some of the top proje projects out there like Ocean Protocol. We recently signed a deal with Singularity as well, who is uh, using like Filecoin and IPFS, uh, using Lighthouse and our set of tools and SDKs for not just storage, but also access control as well. So from last six months, uh, we are seeing a lot of data coming in from these uh, AI use cases. And then in terms of infrastructure, we are working with various CPU, GPU providers, various other infrastructure providers like, uh, for example, Webash has 5,000 websites deployed uh, on their infrastructure and they are using Lighthouse underneath. And then we are working with most of the other uh, blockchain ecosystems as partners as well. And at Lighthouse, we have these four products, like Lighthouse Files is a very easy to use uh, dashboard that anyone can log in. You can find it at files.lighthouse.storage. You can log in with your Google, GitHub wallet. You can upload files, you can upload encrypted files, you can get storage proofs and then share files uh, to different email addresses, wallet addresses, and then pay even in credit card using Stripe or using crypto as well. And then uh, the second tool is Lighthouse SDK and Lighthouse CLI. Uh, these are primarily tools for developers. So let's say if you're building like a new NFT marketplace, you can use and integrate uh, these developer tools in your stack. And the fourth one here is Lighthouse Coverage, which is a Hindi word which means uh, shield. And this is our encryption SDK uh, that I'll also talk about in the next slide. Um, but essentially it allows us to store encrypted data and build token gated applications. And how our encryption works right now is we have these certain uh, number of uh, Lighthouse nodes. Right now there are five Lighthouse nodes. And what you can do is you can have access control um, with any authentication method out there, be it uh, you can um, restrict a file's access using like a Google account, GitHub account, using your crypto wallets, be it MetaMask, Solana, etc. And the interesting problem that we are solving here is that um, the private key to your file is not stored at a single place, like it's not just stored on the client's end, and it's not stored at a single uh, server on Lighthouse, but it's like split it across various Lighthouse nodes. And when you as a user, you come, you can sign from any of these authentication method, or you can also use passkey signatures, which is essentially your fingerprint or face ID on your phone. And when that gets authenticated, all the sharded keys of the file is aggregated, uh, and then as a user, you can see it on your end and then decrypt the file and easily share across. So for example, if for the crypto native people here, like let's say if you own one Pudgy token in your wallet, then you can access a file or you own, let's say thousand file tokens in your wallet, then you can access a file. All of those on-chain conditions can be built or it could also be access control locked as well. So you can uh, like time locked it in a way that, okay, I want this file to be stored on, uh, to be opened on um, 4th of July next year. So something like that on-chain logic can also be built. So it could be us useful for various evidence uh, management tools as well. And this is again like a bit technical nuance just to touch here, uh, which essentially means that uh, we are using heavily all of these Filecoin miners underneath and then we give these proofs that you can verify that yes, your uh, even it's like a bigger like GBs or terabyte files, or even if it's like a megabyte small file, can be verified that it's actually stored, uh, and we give you these proofs that you can verify. And coming back to like the main topic, uh, which is like, okay, how do we use decentralized networks for justice management, I guess? There are three properties that shine out here. First is data integrity, 
which essentially means that the data that you are uploading, it's not altered or tampered with. Uh, and then you have the guarantees of authenticity um, and then integrity of these legal documents. So in a way, uh, IPFS as a technology is quite relevant here because uh, when you fetch data from IPFS, you are referencing it from uh, with a unique identifier of the file. So it's not like a uh, traditional cloud where it's facebook.com slash car.jpg. Um, because if it was uh, that referencing system, I could go and change that car photo to a cat photo. So that can easily be, you know, altered. But then what IPFS allows us to do is it's a content addressable. So every file has a unique cryptographic hash, uh, which I can use to get my data from anyone in the network. So I just have to come up with this ID, like CID that I can give in the network and then fetch the data back and be assured that yes, this data is the same data that I uploaded some time back. Uh, and the second thing is provenance. Provenance is useful to provide uh, like a whole history of, okay, when this data was captured, when this data was uploaded. So provenance is another important property for, um, that has to be there for justice management. Um, and then the third thing is security that when you're storing this kind of data, it has to be stored at a place where um, there's less chances of data breach and malicious actors of taking it down in a way like there's no one central entity that can take your data down. And then uh, also the right authorities sh should have uh, the access over it because uh, in a lot of these legal cases, when you see it, uh, even like the victims, they don't want their data to be public. They want some authorities to see it. So uh, data integrity is the first important point, uh, which provides uh, immutability and trust. Second thing is provenance with the whole trail of history. And third is security that um, the data is available, but then uh, with the right set of access control to the authorized individuals. And talking about some of the examples that I've been seeing around uh, in the ecosystem, one is, uh, this company called as Numbers Protocol, uh, who have built like this cool mobile applications that can be used to um, capture data. And then on the right hand side, you can also see that uh, with every capture, they provide, okay, what's the unique identifier of the file, who created this file, and like a certificate, like a digital certificate that can be used to verify that, okay. At, that particular point of time, let's say if we create a photo here of everyone sitting here, then we can, using their tool, verify that on this particular timestamp, uh, this event happened. And then this another example was quite interesting by this team called as Charling Labs, which has worked with various um, news agencies like Reuters, etc. And I think they uh, recently did like a whole campaign during um, the entire uh, transition of power from the last US government to the new government, like the whole 78 days, uh, like they took all the pictures, all the documents, and then uh, made like a whole archive of it that can be verified with people that these incidents happen in this uh, periodical order. Uh, and then as you can see in this, uh, you can see all the metadata of like, okay, what's the location of the file, uh, who verified it, uh, physically on that location and what are the cryptographic hash of the data being stored on IPFS, Filecoin, and with an economic guarantee of a blockchain like Hedera in this case as well. And this is one of another clients that we are working with right now, uh, which have legal use cases. Uh, it's called as Arc Vista. So it's like a B2B2C product. Uh, it's based out of North America. What they are doing is they have built a very easy to use mobile app uh, and a desktop app, uh, which they offer to lawyers who then offer it to, let's say families and the end customers who want to store their all entire family hierarchical documents, all your property documents, all the digital, let's say real estate plans, medical uh, documents and financial records. Uh, and all of that can be stored on uh, their product. And then they are using uh, Lighthouse underneath for storage and access control. And the last example is also another similar to the first one, but then the, there's this product called as Nodal Network. Uh, and it is also allowing you to, you know, um, take a picture from their app uh, and then you can easily um, like have a digital signature over it and then even turn it into an NFT that you can share it across to uh, different people. So I think this is 
um, all of these examples that we just saw touches the base of data integrity, provenance and access control, which I think are super important for justice management. But yeah, happy to answer any questions, but uh, that was all.